Hi everybody, I'm Sabine from The Wine Collective and I've got Troy Kaleski here with me today from Kaleski Wines. Hello. Hello Sabine, g'day everybody. <laughs> um, I'm lucky, we're lucky enough to obviously have you here with us. So your family have been growing grapes since 1853 and you're one of the Barossa's leading grape growing families. And after how many generations, more than, more than six or more than five, you decided to, to start actually making wine as well. Is that true? Yeah, no, that's right, Sabine. So um, our family have had our farm vineyard uh, since 1853 uh, in the Mopa, northwestern region of the Brossa Valley. Uh, for most of the, the past seven generations, we've been uh, farmers and grape growers um, and sold the grapes to other wineries. And then uh, I'm the first winemaker in the family. So since 2002, we've made our own Kaliski wine. From the family what grapes. happened? Did you just say, that's it, I'm done, I'm going to do it myself? Or had you been playing um, around with it in hand and then you just went, oh, this is pretty good? Yeah, no, it wasn't quite exactly like that. <laughs> um, I suppose during high school, I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Um, I decided to, to go off and uh, become a winemaker. So I studied at uni, worked for other companies for a while, and then I guess we realised that we had some very, very good fruit on our own family properties and great old wines and so forth. Uh, so then... Thought, well, why not give it a crack? Let's make our own Kaliski brand of wine. And um, yeah, we started off with, with two wines back in 02. And uh, I guess every year since then, we started to make uh, more wine and, and family no longer sells grapes for the wineries. And uh, hence we've got about 20 Kaliski wines uh, in a range today. So what is what do you think the real hero of the Barossa is that not right? Or... Uh, my favourite variety is Grenache. Um, from the so there, is, there is so much, obviously, amazing Shiraz that Barossa is known for, but Barossa has some of the best old wine Grenache, the oldest vines in the world for Grenache. Um, just the climate, the soil, everything just makes an amazing Grenache wine, and you can make it in whatever style you want, whether that's a young, like fresh fruit drink style, whether it's a really rich, concentrated, um, dark, heavy fruit sort of from old wines. It's, it's really true, isn't it? You, it? It comes all the way from like, not a light body, but a medium body wine to the complete extent where it's massive and complex. And uh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, Grenache is such a versatile variety. Like it can be that standalone, uh, but it's a great blender, of course, um, GSM being the most common. So it's a really powerful workforce variety um, and such a beautiful drink. So and I find Grenache is likeable by a lot of people because it's got generally enough flavour and character there for the, the richer Shiraz drinkers, but it's also being a little bit lighter in tannin, um, a little bit softer and rounder. For people that don't really like big reds, it's actually um, very pleasant for them as well. So it's just yeah. a beautiful all-rounder. I completely agree. It's also perfect with food. It's always just an easy wine to go to because you, you just know that it's so reliable. I, I absolutely love Renat. One of my favourites. That's, that's a great way to put it. If you're going to a barbecue or a dinner party or yeah. whatever it is, when you can do these things again, um, it, it's certainly a very reliable go-to wine and it keeps yeah. everybody happy. So my next question is about the Koleski thing and... I guess that it brings into the tie the whole Nitschke with the Nitschke relation and obviously the wines that you produce for us. I was trying to do some research beforehand and I saw this history about like, so was it your great grandmother married into the, how did that work? Tell me all about this, please. Yeah. So we've got our Kaleski range of wines, which is 100% from our Kaleski family property estate. Um, my mum's maiden name is Nitschke. And so um, when mum and dad married, when the Kaleski and Nitschkes were joined, um, that's uh, how the Nitschke theme comes into, into our range. So we, we've made Kaleski wines since 2002. And then um, in 2008, we uh, launched the Nitschke label. So uh, Nitschke is a brand that is not always from our Kaliski family vineyard. It's from some neighbouring growers who have got some amazing vineyard mm. um, in the area. Rossi here. So I guess with our Kaliski range, we're limited by what we grow on our family uh, property. And with Nitschke, we can be a little bit more uh, playful and diverse and, and source from these other neighbouring growers. And so uh, the Nitschke family, my mum's family and the generations before her, um, 
to my grandparents, great grandparents, and so forth. They've got a long history in the vineyard and wine industry as well. So, um, so on mum's side, my great 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 grandfather, I think it was, planted some of the, the very first uh, grapes uh, in the Barossa here, um, along with the Yonan Grant um, on, on the banks of, of the Jacobs Creek. Obviously, a yeah. very famous, famous wine label now. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So we, we sell the, the Jack and the Harry and they're by far one of, well, two of the most popular wines that we sell to our wine collective customers. Um, I guess I want to know, and I guess our customers want to know what's the secret, what makes them so good? They're just so juicy and delightful. There must be like some sort of secret potion that goes in when they're being made. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, no, it's great. Yeah, right. The customers love the the, the the Harry and the Jack. Um, I can't give away all the secrets of how they're made. It's like the Coca-Cola <laughs> recipe or the secret sauce recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I think I think the key to to these wines um, is somewhat the simplicity of them, and by that I mean they're still reasonably complex and flavoursome, but the simplicity in the making. So I just Good quality fruit from some old vines, some younger vines as well. Just very traditional winemaking. So uh, open top fermenters, uh, some wild yeast fermentation, um, doing hand pump overs, morning and evening, reasonably warm ferment, uh, then traditionally pressed, include the pressings, pre run together, then barrel maturation um, for a numerous lengths of time, depending on what variety it is, the GSM or the Shiraz. Um, and then into bottles. So it's, there's nothing amazing or fancy about it. It's just having good quality grapes uh, picked at optimal mm. ripeness. Um, they're not over the top, um, but they're not, you know, um, too, they're not too light wines. They're just good, medium to full body, very drinkable wines. Um, and, yeah, just, just like I said, keeping it, keeping it simple and generally honest. Yeah, yeah. I think that also is that you, that's your approach as well with wine making in general, even with the, the Colesky brand, with the fact that you make obviously organic wine, you, you make vegan friendly wine as well. Obviously realise that, you know, keeping it, I guess, all the way through from the vineyard, all the way through making the process, you want to keep it really simple and clean. Yeah, and that's basically our until our Colesky philosophy, which we apply to our Colesky wines or to the Nitschke range of wines. We, we believe that that wine should be about the time and the place where it's grown um, and should reflect the vineyard origin. And so like all of our Plesky wines are farmed organically and, and biodynamically. And we feel that if you've got the good quality grapes from the vineyard, when it gets into the winery, then you're just guiding those grapes into bottle without manipulating them too much at all. So yeah, we use, you know, some new oak, French oak or American oak as required, um, as long as it complements that wine. But, um, you know, it goes back to just doing it very naturally and minimalist. So, um, you know, very hands-off generally with the wine making, not adding tannins and fining agents and different bits and pieces. So just uh, letting, you know, letting the fruit shine through, which is what wine should be. It's been, I've noticed as well, just with what we're getting asked for by our customers in the market, that it's becoming... There was a bit of a surge for organics and sort of vegan, vegan friendly wine, and now it's really comfortable again that people are really conscious of what they're eating, what they're drinking. So I think that it's just becoming something that's going to happen by everybody. It's just really important. Uh, Absolutely. So when we, um, our property has been certified uh, organic for over 20 years now. Um, so when we first started our wine, uh, we were certified organic from day one with the wine, but we didn't actually put it on the label for the first few years because yeah. back then organic wine was kind of, you know, made by hippies and a bit brown and oxidized and not that drinkable. So we wanted to establish ourselves as a good quality winery making good wine. And it's like, oh, by the way, we're organic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as the years go on, we're using uh, the organic aspect a little more prominently because people are more interested in it, uh, as you said, because people are getting more and more aware of, what they're putting into their body and also environmentally and how things are farmed, grown and made. And, you know, being organic uh, is, to me, just it's no brainer. It's absolutely uh, the way to go uh, to make, you know, good quality wine that's truly sustainable um, and doesn't have any bad stuff in it for you. Yeah, excellent. I was also thinking about how, how long we have been selling the Nitschke range for, and I think it's 
been over 10 years as well. It's been, I, I remember when I first started working for back then the Wine Society, we had like, might have been like a 2012 or something. I can't even remember what vintage the first, the first Shiraz that we got was with the old label, but it's just been such a consistently strong wine. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. It's been well over 10 years now. Yeah. I've been doing whiskey for, and yeah, the label was, um, I don't know, somewhat horrible back then, to be honest. <laughs> I think it was, <laughs> it's looking, it's looking really smart too at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. anyway, anyway, look, th things evolve. Um, but look, importantly, you know, the wine, um, it doesn't change apart from the some season variation. It's, it's always got that good, honest drinkability about it. So. Well, perfect. Well, enjoy the glass that you have in front of you. Um, we might let you go because we've got a few bits and pieces to do today, but thank you so much for your time. Thanks, viewers, for watching. Thanks, Trey. I'm Sabine. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Sabine. Cheers. Uh, bye. <laughs>